të tashmë miqë, salam alikum, ta kohemi sot në datën 10 djetor, të vitit 2020. Sot, po bisedoj me një gazetar italian, nga Sardenia, apo më sak një analist, i cili shkruan për rivista di studi geopolitik që Eurazia, me zotin Daniel Pera. Danieli është i bazuar në Sardenia të Italis, dhe me Danielin sot ne do të diskutojmë një temë interesante, e cila ka të bëj me të ardhmen e mekut në detin Adriatik. Pak ditë më parë, medjet shqiptare, njëftuon që një nga ishtë këshiltarët e presidentit të zjedur Amerikan, zoti Daniel Ben Aim, në një intervjistë që ka dhënë për rjedat politike që do dëndihi administrata me presidentin e saj të ri me Joe Bidenin, do të ndryshojnë shumë nga politikat që ka ndjekur administrata evangelisto zioniste e presidentit Trump. Dërë të tjera, zoti Ben Aim ka sugjeruar që administrate Joe Bidenit në i farë mënyre hakmarje ndaj lidhjes agresive të mekut me qarqet ekstremiste evangeliste të Trumpit, do të ndryshoj politikat e tia drejt Iranit, do të kthehet në marveshje nukleare me Iranin, dhe një nga propozimet që ka bërë, apo sugjerimet që i ka bërë, është që administrata e Joe Bidenit ka mundësi që ta dëboj mekun, apo organizatën ishtë terroristet të muqahidin dhe Iranian, nga deti Adriatik, dhe t'i qoja ta në Etiopi, apo në Eritrea, apo të gjejnë ndo një vënd në Afrikë dhe t'i hedhin. Zoti Daniel Ben Aim, në intervjistën e ti, thot ndër të tjera që zyrtarët shqiptari janë ankuar për aktivitetet e muqahidinve në Shqipëri, nda e Amerikanve, në lidhje me aktivitetet e tyre ilegale, në lidhje me të trafiku njërzor, drogën dhe armët. Akuzat janë shumë të rënda, por për më tepër edhe sugjerimi i ish këshiltarit të zvëndës presidentit Joe Biden, i cili mund bëjt këshiltar i ti i ri pasi presidentit Biden të vinë pushtet, është një farë deklarate e thell tektonike përsa i përket politikës amerikane në lidhje me Shqiprin, por edhe me detin Adriatik. Për këtë arsye, unë në sot do të bëjnë një bised me Zotin Daniel Pera, ku do të mundohem që të marë një perspektiv italiane bi ato që ndodhin në Shqipëri. Mr. Daniel Pera, thank you for coming to my show. I made a small introduction about you in Albanian. I showed that you are an analyst for Eurasia, Eurasia Revista di Studi Geopolitici. You are based in Sardinia and you are a researcher about the Middle East. So today I'm going to have a Uh, uh, a discussion with you and uh, because we want to get an Italian perspective. So <laughs> we, I want to get your feedback about uh, uh, an interview that uh, Mr. Daniel Ben Aim, who has been advisor to uh, uh, Joe Biden in the past. And uh, in his uh, interview, uh, uh, Mr. Ben Aim made a number of suggestions about the shifting of the policies of the new U.S. administration regarding America's attitude towards Russia, towards China, <coughs> towards Iran. And the thing that was very interesting for us here in Albania, but I think that can draw some kind of interest even in Italy, 
is that <laughs> among others, Mr. Ben Aim uh, has suggested that uh, when the Biden administration goes back to the <laughs> Iran nuclear deal, they might even remove uh, the ex-terrorist organization of the Mujahideen and Halk, which uh, Albania hosts. This uh, organization <laughs> is based in the village of Mans, a few kilometers far from the city di Durazzo. And uh, the Mujahideen, they have access to Adriatic Sea. According to the <coughs> information that we have here in Albania, recently they have started even buying speedboats. And uh, uh, so what does this thing mean? It means that the Mujahideen might uh, approach through the Adriatic Sea, Italy, in very few minutes. Now, uh, from the past history, <coughs> we know that uh, MEC has involved itself in a number of uh, terrorist uh, uh, actions, and uh, the uh, equipment of this Mujahideen organization based in Albania with the speedboats, which uh, can sail through the Adriatic Sea, in a, in, in a way, <laughs> threatens even Italy. Uh, probably the Italian public does not know a lot about MEC, but we have uh, some uh, Italian politicians like Giulio Terzi, who are diehard supporters of this uh, jihadi organization. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to uh, have your uh, feedback on what I already explained to you. Yes, um, what, you're, uh, what you said can be a, really a threat um, uh, for Italy, especially if the, the MAC, the Mujahideen Kalk, will start to use these uh, speedboats for uh, legal uh, trafficking, of, uh, which can be human beings, can be drugs, can be weapons. We know, for example, that in Libya, after the destabilization of 2010-11, after uh, the, the falling of uh, Gaddafi's uh, regime, uh, the human trafficking uh, between Libya and uh, Italy is uh, very strong, is very is widespread. And uh, if it will start to, if Italy will start to have another front uh, on the Adriatic Sea, this can be, of course, uh, a real threat and a real problem for the um, Italian uh, foreign policy. At the same time, we know that uh, many political Italian politicians uh, work against uh, the national interests. Italy, as a um, as I in, uh, in many of my articles, uh, lacks uh, sovereignty. <clears throat> Italy is like a colony of, the, uh, of uh, NATO, a colony and of the United States, and the, the Italian politicians, mainly they take order from uh, other centers of uh, power. From the Americans, we would say. Yes. Uh, now, I have a question. We have some Italian politicians like Giulio Terzi who uh, support <laughs> Max so much. Uh, he makes us angry in Albania when we see him. <clears throat> and we have a question for Mr. Terzi. If you love Max so much, why don't you take their jihadi camp and uh, locate it somewhere in the uh, vicinity of Rome? Of course, this will be a major <laughs> in Italy, and you'll have mass protests, because even though Italy <coughs> is not a, a, a free country, especially since the Second World War, and in your foreign policies, you are very often dictated by the Americans, still you have a very strong civil society, uh, media, and uh, public opinion, which protests about it. Now, the question that I have, because, for example, in Albania, we have politicians like uh, Pandeli Maiko or Fatmir Medio who are disgraced here and who support the MAC because they have big problems with the law, with their past, 
they don't want to upset the Americans. They even benefit economically from them. But my question is, what sends people like Giulio Terzi to support Mac in Italy? Uh, do you follow me? Could you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, I couldn't hear uh, the end of the question, uh, probably. Other. Yes, yeah, so the end of the question is, what sends people like Giulio Terzi to support the Mujahideens, which are based in Albania? They're a threat for Albania. They're a threat for Italy. They are an ex-terrorist organization. They're violent jihadists. Uh, yeah, what I can I can say, as I said before, is that many Italian uh, politicians work against the national interest of Italy. They work and they are paid by other centers of power. They are uh, they work for uh, NATO. They work uh, and they are paid by NATO. They are paid by other um, uh, institution that with the. Um, uh, from the from the United States, and um, here uh, um, in Italy there is a problem. Uh, we can, I mean, we know that Mac, for example, has uh, supported other uh, political parties around Europe. We know, for example, about Vox in Spain, and it can be really a problem if Mac is going to to financially support also. Italian political organization. We don't know yet if this is uh, if this a supposition, let's say. But we know that uh, there is a um, um, there are some Trumpist uh, political parties uh, in Italy, and in my opinion. There is nothing strange if uh, one day we will uh, understand that these parties are getting uh, financial support from this kind of organization. All right, uh, Daniel, uh, I mean, as I, as I told you before, uh, we have this uh, suggestion in a way by Mr. Daniel Ben Aim, who suggested that uh, the Joe Biden administration will go back to the Iran nuclear deal and it is a possibility for them to remove MEC from the Adriatic Sea, which means Albania, and send them to uh, Eritrea or Ethiopia. Do you think this is a possibility from the new US administration? Um, the, US, the new US administration uh, for sure will face many difficulties in the first uh, um, in the first period, in the first months uh, um, of working, uh, because uh, there are still uh, some major, some Trumpist uh, majorities in the in the American Congress and uh, also in the uh, Constitutional Court. So it's going to be difficult to, if from an Italian perspective, uh, would be great to to back to JCPOA. Because uh, Italy, for example, lost like uh, 27,000 uh, 27 uh, billions uh, of trade uh, of uh, trade agreements with uh, with Iran thanks to the withdrawal from the JCPOA uh, of Donald Trump. I don't know if it's uh, if for for sure United States uh, if they if they really want another deal with the. Uh, if they have another, um, if they will have another deal with uh, with Iran, the only thing that they can uh, <coughs> is the removal of uh, of Mac from uh, the Adriatic Sea, or uh, to give uh, Mac uh, to bring back uh, the Mac in Iran. But at the moment, I don't see uh, the possibility of the of a new deal or a return to the JCPOA from uh, uh, from with the Iran and the United States. Uh, Mr. <coughs> uh, Daniel, you mentioned that Italy lost a lot economically from the US embargo against Iran. 
Can you elaborate a bit more on this? Yeah, there were um, <coughs> after the the sign of the JCPOA in uh, 2015, Italy signed the memorandum, uh, the so-called memorandum of understandings uh, uh, with uh, Iran to develop uh, trade uh, deals from Italy to Iran. And they develop uh, trade deals for an amount of uh, 27 uh, billions of uh, dollars. But with the withdrawal from the JCPOA of uh, Donald Trump of the United States under Donald, the Donald Trump administration, uh, Italy lost uh, this money because Italy is just following back, following uh, what uh, the United States says to its politicians to do. In Europe, we will, they were thinking to, to try to find a way to uh, neutralize the, the unilateral sanctions of the uh, United States and keep uh, trading uh, with Iran. But of course, they, in the end, they didn't find a, they didn't find a way. Probably, they didn't even want to find a way. Uh, uh, if you can tell us uh, something, does the Italian public know anything about Mac? Mac is not uh, pretty no uh, is pretty unknown uh, in Italy. Probably the few people that knows Mac, they know they know it uh, like a Marxist uh, Leninist organization or something like that, and uh, maybe they even uh, uh, feel uh, sympathy for them, uh, like they do with the PKK in uh, in Turkey or, uh, for example. Um, as I said before, uh, probably if if today you ask. Uh, uh, a deb um, congressor in Italy, what is Mac? Uh, probably he de he will not be able to reply. So I believe that Mac is pretty unknown in Italy, and so, we don't know. We we still don't know the threat posed by Mac in uh, in the in the Adriatic Sea. Now, <clears throat> from what we know. Uh, MEC uh, receives funding from Saudi Arabia, probably from some other countries in the in the Gulf in for its uh, uh, war against Iran. Now, the possibility exists <laughs> that uh, if MEC uh, does not have funding anymore, uh, there might be a riot inside the MEC camp. And if riot happens inside the MEC camp, we might have the break of organization. If this organization breaks up, and from what we know now, MEC already has bought a number of speedboats, uh, you in Italy are going to see a second uh, Libyan scenario. Uh, according to the data from the Institute of Statistics here in Albania, we have uh, at least 7,000 Mujahideens. These are people uh, battle-hardened, they are foreign fighters, are people who have fought uh, for Saddam Hussein against Iran, against Kurds and others. In a case that uh, <clears throat> after the coming of Joe Biden administration and uh, Saudis probably cutting the funding for maintaining this paramilitary organization in Albania, we might have a huge riot because the way how Mariam Rajavi keeps uh, her jihadi soldiers now here is uh, she keeps them by, by, by giving them food and shelter. Uh, uh, from what we know, each and every Mujahideen gets around 500 euros a month. So if we have 7,000, it means almost 3.5 million euros every month to maintain the jihadi organization run. Now, in case the donors of MEC, like Saudi Arabia, cut the funding, these people will, will go hungry. And what we will have here in Albania, because 7,000 are too many, Albania does not have 7,000 military men, soldiers. So uh, uh, in, it will be a major security threat if this organization breaks up. And it will be a nightmare for Italy, because like in Italy, you are having all these uh, refugees coming from Libya after the breakup of uh, the Libyan government of Gaddafi we might have the same scenario in Albania. 
So do you, what do you think? What is this for Italy? Isn't it a ticking bomb? It's a, a great threat for Italy, of course. The destabilization of a country like Albania or the, destabil the destabilization of the... which means the entire... Uh, the destabilization of the entire uh, Balkan uh, area. It's, of course, a huge threat for Italy. But still, uh, here in Italy, we don't, uh, we don't really understand uh, the, uh, what uh, can be a threat... Uh, uh, in 2010, we supported uh, who was attacking uh, Libya. And we knew that Libya was going to become a, a, sta a failed uh, state, a state uh, hostage of uh, criminal organizations. Probably someone knew that this was the, the final uh, result. But they did it uh, anyway. They supported uh, France and uh, Great Britain. They supported uh, who was bombing uh, Libya. So I, I don't know. Th this is what I believe when I, what I think when I say that some that Italian politicians are working against the national interests. Italy has lost uh, his uh, its uh, capability to to uh, build. Uh, uh, geopolitical influence uh, inside the Mediterranean area and has a colony, ha doesn't have any possibility to, to express a real uh, geopolitical view. Uh, Daniel, in the early 1990s, Italy was very much present in Albania. It also helped Albania in 1999-2000 uh, to uh, stabilize itself. <clears throat> in uh, 1939, we were invaded by Italy. We, we became part of the colonial Italian state. Uh, we became part of the dual monarchy. Uh, uh, but <laughs> I see since the year 2000, and especially lately with, uh, with Trump and what have you, Italy has lost a lot of its influence in Albania. Uh, when it comes to the foreign poli uh, policies of Albania, <coughs> it is the Americans who have taken our foreign policy hostage. <coughs> and when it comes to the politics of Albania with Iran, we have this jihadi organization of uh, Mariam Rajavi, the Mujahideens, who have taken us hostage. As you mentioned before, <laughs> Italy benefited a lot from the Iran nuclear deal because it had many contracts with Iran. In 2018, <laughs> when I visited the European Parliament in Brussels, we had a discussion with one Italian expert who he was showing how MEC goes after <laughs> uh, every Italian company which has business in Iran, and they go and blackmail them, threaten them, tell them Americans are going to hit you, Americans are going to blacklist you and what have you. They are doing the same here in Albania. <clears throat> so the Mujahideens, who are in a way uh, uh, the good mercenaries and terrorists of the Americans, have in a way destroyed the good relations that Albania and Italy had with Iran. We are losing millions of dollars because of the Mujahideens. And when it comes to Italy, <laughs> Italy, which should build a very strong partnership with Albania, we are neighbors, we see that our foreign policy has been taken hostage by the Americans. Of course, we know that. We cannot do anything about that. But even by these Mujahideens, what the hell is going on? Where is, where is the mighty Italy? Where is the Italy of, uh, I don't know, of Berlusconi or whatever, or, or the, of Mussolini or whatever, which was standing up on its feet? I, I'm, not, I'm not apologizing and I'm not defending any of these people that I mentioned, but I'm, uh, what I want to say is, where is the might of Italy? I mean, why we are being humiliated in such a way? It's, uh, it's a good question. I would like to, to answer. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, there is not really an answer. I mean, the only answer that I can give you is that we don't have sovereignty. We are not a, a sovereign state. Um, the, uh, from 1945, there were uh, three politicians uh, and, uh, that tried more or less to give back Italy its uh, sovereignty. 
One was Mattei, Enrico Mattei, which was uh, mainly uh, an, empty, an entrepreneur. Uh, and he died in a, a plane crash. The other, ones, the other one was uh, Aldo Moro, and he, was, uh, he has been assassinated. The third one was uh, Bettino Craxi, and uh, he got uh, exiled. He, he went uh, for uh, exile in, um, in uh, Indonesia. These were the, uh, our politi the good politicians that we had in Italy, even if they, we were uh, still uh, a colony of the United <coughs> States, which, because we had the basis of the United States all over uh, the country. We were trying to, to build our uh, foreign policy in an autonomous way, but we nowadays with the destruction the, the destruction of uh, our uh, uh, political class which is uh, mainly uh, made by ignorant people we don't have any any skill to 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 build a real uh, uh, a form of a geopolitical uh, view of geopolitical influence in the mediterranean sea Italy nowadays is completely zero in uh, geopolitics. Daniel, okay then, I have another question, but before this question, I would like to ask you if you can go a bit further back for the camera so that we can have a better view. Yeah, that's it. So <clears throat> I have another question. Okay, we know that Italy now has lost its independence and what have you. Then what about the Vatican? Uh, we had uh, uh, in the last Christmas, if I'm not wrong, we had uh, Mariam Rajavi <laughs> going and celebrating Christmas Mass with uh, the chief uh, Archbishop of Tirana, George Anthony Freddo. Now, uh, uh, the, the, or the terrorist organization of the Mujahideens, they are uh, die-hard anti-clericals. They say openly, when we go to Iran, we're going to kill all the clerics. Uh, I mean, Vatican is a is a theocracy, is a theocratic state, and uh, <clears throat> the message that uh, Mariam Rajavi delivers against religion and the clergy is uh, is crazy. I mean, it is, they are they are they are like the Jacobins in 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 the French Revolution when they killed the priests and destroyed the churches and and they attacked uh, the Vatican. And uh, now my question is. What about the Vatican? Why Vatican is not speaking about it? Why we have the chief bishop here in Albania of the Catholic Church, which receives in its mass an ex-terrorist leader, a person who has blood on her hand. I mean, uh, receiving Mariam Rajavi in the Christmas mass is like uh, receiving Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi or uh, Osama bin Laden in, in a mass. To, to wish uh, uh, a good uh, mass to the Christians. Uh, where is Vatican? Why Vatican is not speaking about it? Well, what I can say is that Vatican nowadays is, a, um, let's say that there is a kind of a struggle inside the Vatican. There is a part of the, of the clerics that are uh, more, uh, um, let's say that support or they have supported the, the Trump administration and another part which comprehends also the the Pope Francesco which is uh, which was uh, against the Trump administration the Vatican tried also to, to build a, a foreign uh, um, an autonomous uh, independent uh, uh, foreign policy and uh, also a kind of anti-imperialistic uh, foreign policy during the with the with this pope but still is completely different it's com it's really difficult because because of this struggle that is that there is inside the vatican and um, and yeah it's i'm not surprised of uh, what is going what will happen in, in albania with the uh, with this bishop that will uh, uh we will. Uh, he will uh, uh, make the mess with uh, with Marianne Rajavi. 
I'm not really surprised. There are uh, within the Vatican, uh, there is uh, again uh, really a component that it's very influenced by the by the American administration. <coughs> Uh, Daniel, uh, Mariam Rajavi, <laughs> a few weeks ago, she sent a congratulatory message to uh, President uh, Trump about winning the elections. Uh, now we have seen that Trump <laughs> did not win the elections. Joe Biden won them. Uh, here in Albania, <laughs> the Mujahideens, <clears throat> they have used the Trump card. Uh, even when they were blackmailing our journalists, the politicians, Everyone else, they were saying, okay, we are with Trump, we work with CIA, etc. Now, after coming of uh, Biden to power in the United States, I believe will be a, a revenge on all the misdeeds that the evangelical Zionist administration of Trump did against everybody, <laughs> against the Muslim world, against Palestinians, against Iran, against Venezuela, you name it. And uh, uh, as the interview of Mr. Daniel Ben Aim shows, probably I believe that there is a plan uh, for revenge even against the Mujahideens. Do you think that this possibility exists? May depends mainly if the Mujahideen, uh, uh, if the Mac is going to be still useful for the American foreign policy, or uh, if it's not? If it's not, yeah, I guess there will be the possibility uh, f to move the, the Mac from uh, from Albania and to re uh, rebuild the uh, uh, trust, let's say the trust between uh, Iran and the United States and to go back to a form to a new to the JCPOA or to a new deal, maybe, which actually is, I think is going to be the best solution for both of them. All right, Daniel, my final question to you. I'm sorry for taking so long. <coughs> my final question is uh, in 2012, 13, I wrote many articles here in Albania about the radicalization of uh, Muslims in the Balkans. Uh, we had uh, the US administration, Qatar, uh, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, etc., who in a way supported the jihadists going to Syria. We had uh, mass radicalization of uh, Muslims. And this thing was done under the supervision of the Americans, to be sure about that. Uh, now, do you see any second jihad coming uh, in, 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 in the Middle East where Muslims will be radicalized and will be used as a cannon fodder for American imperialism in the Middle East? We have the Mujahideens already, we have one, but do you see something else coming? Um, it, um, with the the so-called uh, Abraham Agreement uh, signed by the Trump administration and the, uh, the Zionist entity Israel and uh, some uh, Arab countries. They say that this uh, agreement was a peace deal. I'm not at all uh, sure that this is a peace deal. It's mainly, uh, it's mainly business not only business, also geopolitics, because the reason is to build a, a coalition against uh, Iran, but also against uh, Turkey and also against Pakistan, which is the only Muslim country um, with a nuclear weapon. So I believe that there is still the possibility of, uh, of a new military confrontation in the, in the Middle East, because the Odetti non plan is uh, pretty clear in this sense. It's uh, this uh, famous uh, plan uh, uh, thought and uh, wrote by um, this uh, colonel of the um, Israeli Defense Force in the 80s of the previous centuries. It was pretty clear and it was uh, 
the plan was to divide the Middle East uh, among uh, ethnic and uh, religious uh, lines. This plan for the for Israel, but even for the United States, uh, is still uh, valid, and I believe that they will uh, still uh, try to to realize it. And the price will be paid by us, the Europeans. Of course, the price <laughs> will be paid by by us in terms of the refugees in the Balkans, in uh, in Italy, in the east of Europe. I mean, it's always uh, like that, unfortunately. America and Israel do wars, and we take the refugees of wars. Italy, France, Germany, Norway, Sweden has to receive <coughs> millions of refugees from Iraq, Afghanistan, Iran, Palestine, uh, Eritrea, uh, Sudan, uh, you name it. Uh, Yemen, we have to receive the Mujahideens here because Americans and Israelis want to realize their biblical uh, uh, schizophrenia of the greater Israel. Yeah, Daniel, but if I, if I not, uh, if I can say something else, uh, can I? Sure, sure. Uh, because I believe that in the that the United States were kind of uh, supporting uh, this myth. Maybe you can say something more about it uh, of a uh, greater uh, Albania from uh, like a uni to unite uh, Albania, Kosovo and uh, some part of uh, North Macedonia. And uh, probably this is uh, the fact that now you have uh, the Mac, it's like the price that you have to pay for this uh, kind of uh, <laughs> support that they provide you. But, but, but as a matter of fact, <laughs> Americans didn't create any greater Albania. Of course, of course, of course but <laughs> this is because they don't, they, they, pro, they, they, they promise, but after they don't, they never do what they say. Americans uh, misused the Albanians, used them as mercenaries to destroy Yugoslavia. They created a puppet uh, state called uh, Kosovo, which is not independent. Kosovo, yes. they are far worse economically than they were in the time of uh, Yugoslavia. <laughs> if the European Union removes the visas, you will see tomorrow half of Kosovo abandoning Kosovo and going to live in Italy or in Germany. So this tale of greater Albania, which, <laughs> by the way, was uh, uh, invented by fascist Italy. Yes, yes, of course. We had uh, Mussolini and uh, uh, his administration who uh, sent their troops to invade Greece and to invade uh, Yugoslavia and uh, teaching in our school books <coughs> that we Albanians are Illyrians and we are the soldiers of the Roman Empire. So this whole uh, stupid narrative didn't pay off well. Uh, uh, we, we have seen the destruction of Yugoslavia and at the end of the day, neither Albanians nor the Serbs won anything. And what the Trump administration did in its final days of power, if you have followed the news, they sent yes. to uh, Ashim Thaci and uh, uh, Kadri Veseli and other commanders of the KLA because they used uh, as much as they wanted the KLA. And now that everything is done, they told them, OK, now you are terrorists. It's time to go to jail. This is how they use the Free Syrian Army. This is how they use ISIS in Syria. I mean, whenever you fight for them, they use you. One day you are great American patriot, like Osama bin Laden was in 1980s. The other day they declare you a terrorist. Mariam Rajavi was a terrorist uh, eight years ago. Now she's the Iranian opposition. Another day they'll be made terrorists again if the Joe yeah. Biden administration comes, they will dump them to Africa. This is how the Americans play, isn't it? Yes, it is, exactly. All right, Daniel, uh, ti ringrazio tanto. Se vuoi dire qualcos'altro, altrimenti? Uh, a posto, non c'è. All right. Yeah, vi ringrazio. Okay, I, I thank you very much. I hope to have you again on, uh, on my show. And I hope that the Albanian public is going to enjoy our interview and probably even follow your writings and articles. 
Thank you very much. Arrivederci. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao.